Good morning. I am delighted to be here and to express my deepest appreciation to the thousands of dedicated allergists and immunologists and other medical specialists, allied health and related healthcare professionals who have worked tirelessly since the early hard days of the COVID-19 pandemic, battling critical respiratory issues, reactions to the virus and its treatments and vaccines and the risks of immunosuppression and who continue to address the challenges of this novel coronavirus. I was not at CDC at the time, but I know that Quad AI created a COVID-19 response task force very early in the pandemic, sharing resources to navigate the pandemic and partnering with CDC's emergency response, health system and worker safety and at-risk task forces to learn how asthma might affect risk of COVID-19. Thank you for leaning in during those early days, for learning and adapting along with CDC, and then for staying the course as we have learned more about SARS-CoV-2. There is no question this has been hard. You may have seen the research letter published in JAMA Internal Medicine earlier this month on excess mortality among US physicians during the COVID-19 pandemic reporting that from March 2020 through December 2021, U.S. physicians experienced 622 more deaths than expected, and that there were no excess deaths among physicians after April 2021, coinciding with the widespread availability of COVID-19 vaccines. These were our colleagues, our friends, our co-interns. These three years have been hard on all of us. When I came to CDC just over two years ago, the nation had just begun the largest vaccination program in the history of this country. You were there. When COVID vaccines became available, Quad AI issued guidance on administration of those vaccines and guidance on the role of allergists. Quad AI played another critical role in the early days of the vaccine rollout when we received reports of anaphylaxis after people received their COVID-19 vaccine. You worked with our Clinical Immunization Safety Assessment Project, or CISA, to better understand what was happening and to develop guidance for healthcare professionals. With your expertise and in collaboration, CDC has monitored an anaphylaxis after COVID-19 vaccination and vaccine safety surveillance systems, including review of reported cases. In addition, allergists with CISA have provided consultation to U.S. healthcare providers regarding patients with allergic reactions after COVID-19 vaccine and provided expertise for future vaccination administration and protection. Anaphylaxis after COVID-19 vaccination is fortunately rare and has occurred at approximately five cases per 1 million vaccine doses administered, a rate comparable to many other vaccines. Thanks to 670 million vaccines administered in the United States and the work of thousands of federal, state, local, and healthcare providers like you and Quad AI, and because of more than 100 million infections, Americans have endured and survived. We have built a wall of immunity and expanded the tools available to decrease the risk of severe disease and death from COVID-19. And yet we still have more work to do. We need your help in addressing your patients' concerns about vaccines, especially as we continue to see just over 3,000 deaths each week from COVID-19, a number that is simply unacceptable. The updated bivalent vaccine has been formulated to reflect the most recently circulating viruses that cause COVID-19 and to help restore protection that may have waned since previous vaccination. This is the good news, that we have a readily available, improved tool to help us protect one another and get back to normal life. It's incredibly rare for someone who's been up to date on their vaccine series, including the bivalent vaccine, to succumb to COVID-19. Unfortunately, very few people, less than 16% of those eligible, have received their updated vaccine, meaning that it is likely that a majority of your patients have not received an updated vaccine, putting them at increased risk of severe disease from COVID-19, especially those who are over 65 or who, or who are immunosuppressed. If your patients have not received an updated vaccine since September 1, they are due for a shot. We know there are concerns. We ask you to listen and address those concerns one at a time. For example, your patients may be worried about the possibility of myocarditis or of strokes. 
Be assured that the vaccine safety is our top priority at CDC. For example, we detected a statistical signal for ischemic stroke following administration of the Pfizer bivalent vaccine in people 65 and older, with no safety signals detected for either of the two bivalent vaccines for other age groups. We have not established that this finding is a real safety problem, and large studies using CMS and VA databases indicated no increased risk of ischemic stroke following receiving the updated vaccine. As you're likely aware, our safety systems are intentionally established to trigger early so that we leave no stone unturned. An early signal often does not portend a true risk. CDC and our Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, ACIP, continue to review all available data and provide timely and transparent updates on the safety and effectiveness of COVID-19 vaccines. We know this is important to you and to your patients. Many of your patients are people who are immunocompromised and are rightfully concerned about the impact of COVID. Given Quad AI's rich expertise in immunology, we hope your organization will continue to work with us so that we can learn more and address the concerns you and your patients may have. At this point, we recognize that people are tired of hearing about COVID-19. There may be message fatigue among your patients and even among you as clinicians. And still we ask that as important, trusted messengers, you help keep your patients protected. Please continue to encourage your patients to get an updated COVID-19 bivalent booster and to do what they need to do to protect themselves. Your patients want to hear from you, their trusted source. What do you have to say about COVID-19, about vaccines and other prevention strategies? Studies have shown that one of the most effective ways to convince someone to get vaccinated is through a strong recommendation from a healthcare provider. And resources such as Vaccines, the Myths and Facts posted on the Quad AI website go a really long way in restoring trust in our vaccines. If you asked your patients in the past and they've declined receiving an updated vaccine, please mo learn more about why they've declined. Listen, answer their questions, encourage them again, and work to assuage their concerns with information and resources. And please help us at CDC understand the reasons they are declining. We also hear concerns that COVID-19 vaccine recommendations are too complicated. Please know that CDC, along with FDA and other federal partners, continue to work to simplify the recommendations. FDA recently convened their Vaccines and Related Biological Products Advisory Committee to consider the future of COVID-19 vaccines, and ACIP recently met to consider future COVID-19 vaccine recommendations. We are using this opportunity to recap the current state of knowledge on the immunology of this infection, the response to the virus, the value of simplified vaccine schedules, and plans for regular consideration of when and whether vaccines need to be updated to target current and future SARS-CoV-2 strains. And while much of the national conversation has focused on COVID-19 and other infectious diseases like MPOX, this is not the only challenge we are facing. According to data from CDC just released in 2021 National Health Interview Survey, nearly one third, 31.8% of adults 18 and over in this country have a seasonal allergy, eczema, or food allergy. It is unsurprising then that more than one out of four children, 27.2%, have a seasonal allergy, eczema, or food allergy. As our changing climate has caused shifts in rainfall patterns, seasonal air temperatures, and carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere, these can affect the onset and duration of pollen season for people with seasonal allergies. In 2022, CDC ATSDR developed a national climate and health strategic framework to help communities track, prevent, and respond to public health threats of climate change, including climate change-related health impacts on people with allergic immunologic conditions. I know many of you care for patients with asthma, which affects more than 25 million Americans, according to our most recent data. Asthma takes almost 4,000 lives and causes 1.8 million emergency department visits every single year. The disease costs the nation $50 billion annually. And you all know better than I that asthma, morbidity, and mortality disproportionately affect certain populations, including non-Hispanic Black Americans. 
Black and African American children are twice as likely to be hospitalized and more than four times as likely to die from asthma than white children. CDC is committed to bringing together partners from various sectors to leverage the multidisciplinary expertise and perspective to inform next steps and create a shared commitment to reduce health inequities, including asthma disparities. And let me express my appreciation for Quad AI's clear statement of its core value to respect value and promote diversity and inclusiveness among the individuals and groups with whom you interact, collaborate, and partner, and to using research, education, and advocacy to encourage inclusivity and equity for all. I open with gratitude and I will close on the same note. It has been hard. There is no doubt we in the clinical community and in public health have taken a beating and we are worn down. But let us grant ourselves a little grace to reinvigorate, to not only take care of our patients, but to proactively and intentionally take care of ourselves and our loved ones. This is critically important. And let us together take this opportunity to be introspective and remember, these are the moments we train for. I am personally grateful, CDC is grateful, to the members of Quad AI and to all our nation's health professionals for your dedication to improving health. Thank you for your work and thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today.